people get the wrong impression, maybe, about me or about maybe Christians in general. You know, there's a lot of times on the news, you know, Christians are shown as confrontational, like in some of these repent, you know, kind of guys that run around, you know, preaching and teaching and doing these things on the street and kind of getting in your face kind of thing. But I don't see that as being really what Jesus did. As a matter of fact, lots of times I think Jesus tried to pull away from the crowds and they followed him, you know, and I think that's more of where I'm at, you know, is that I deal in a ministry that seems to attract at times lots of confrontation because people get comfortable in their own little zone. They have their little idol, so to speak, nicely arranged in a row. And anything that upsets their apple cart, sometimes they get upset about. And they will come back and try to tell me or anyone else, you know, well, no, that's not who God is or what God is. You know, they'll, they'll give you some theological idea, you know, or some great long-winded, you know, explanation of why you can't be childlike or simple and trust God and read your Bible. They'll tell you why you have to do it a certain way or how you have to be a certain thing. And, you know, most of the time you can just kind of like shuffle them off, you know, and go, well, you know, if that's good for you, go ahead. But there comes times when people will get right in it, where as much as you don't like to, and maybe neither do I, as much as some people think I do, they'll confront you, you know, with some fallacy, some, some idea they have that they've made up all these excuses around it that look so ridiculous that you have a hard time not laughing about it in the first place, but they're dead serious. So then God tells you, you know, well, talk about it. And so then you do, and if you're wise and let God always keep your focus on him and turn the conversation back to him, then though you may not quote unquote score any points, you know, so to speak with the person, maybe you'll inspire someone who's reading it or watching you or understanding that you're really not coming from a place of trying to be right, but you're trying to explain something about what they're doing wrong or they may be wrong about. And I know Paul, as often as he tried to over and over and over again share with his brethren the truth about law and grace and about Jesus as the Messiah, always he was running into some real hardcore people that just flat out would not accept anything he has to say. And yet, as we see by those confrontations that he went through, his words came out in such a flowing way that God's grace was made manifest to those who would receive it, and they got saved. And so, don't be surprised if in confrontation that if you are involved in it, that if you keep your heart right and your attitude correct, that you will be put into it and go through it, but you may be witnessing to a different audience than you know about. You may be explaining things to people you hadn't thought of that may not be right there in your face, so to speak, but may be watching and some of the silent majority that wants to know what you do when you are confronted, when you are challenged, when you are put into a place of sharing your faith in a sincere and real way but without having to step back from maybe a line that God says, you know, you need to stand to. And it's only when God draws a line in the sand that you can stand there, because if you're trying to stand on sand, you'll find that as soon as the waves come in, they'll wash that sand away, and they'll wash that line away. So you really need to know, by way of His Holy Spirit and the love that you have inside, when where and what to say in any given situation. And I think that's the hard part for me is because I can answer 
but God doesn't always want me to. I do have a solid foundation. I do have a hermeneutic and a homiletic that's assured. I, I know my drash. I know how to debate, discuss, relate, and communicate to the Jew as well as to the Gentile, to the theologically correct as well as the <laughs> cultically challenged, you know. Um, I guess the hard part is to really know when Jesus wants you to and when he doesn't want you to. But when you go through it, I hope you come out of it like I do. You don't like it. I hope you get to the attitude and the perspective that when people are resisting the truth even to themselves, that when it turns ugly and they get nasty or they get bitter or angry or whatever they may do to you, that I hope you don't enjoy that confrontation or that realization, even if you do wind up, for some reason, having a beautiful dissertation, a wonderful explanation, a magnificent, you know, presentation of how God's grace worked in your life and how you were able to share it in such a wonderful way to those that were even very antagonistic to you. Because it says that when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him, that I grieve over those who don't understand. I hurt when they don't understand. And sometimes you share things and you know it doesn't matter. They're not they're not gonna accept it. But those are times that I hope you get the heart that I feel that Jesus wants us to have. And that's to pray for them to be forgiven for the things that they're doing, because they really don't know what they're doing. Sometimes they're like kids in a sandbox, and they have their own little toys that they want to play with, and their own little, you know, spiritual ideas over here, or the spiritual ideas over here, and they play teeter-totter at times, you know, and they don't know how to play right or act right, and sometimes don't even know how to talk right. And it looks a little rough when you go through it, but sometimes God will take you through it in order to bring you to the place where it's not of you but it is of him that he reveals the truth to all men that some might be saved. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb, and they loved not their lives, even unto death. When James and John came to Christ with their mother, asking him to give them the best place in the kingdom, he did not refuse their request, but told them it would be given to them if they could do his work, drink his cup, and be baptized with his baptism. Do we want the competition? The greatest things are always hedged about by the hardest things, and we too shall find mountains and forests and chariots of iron. Hardship is the price of coronation. Triumphal arts are not woven out of those rose blooms and silken cords, but of hard blows and bloody scars. The very hardships that you are enduring in your life today are given by the Master for the explicit purpose of enabling you to win your crown. Do not wait for some ideal situation or some romantic difficulty or some faraway emergency, but rise to meet the actual conditions that the providences of God has placed around you today. Your crown of glory lies embedded in the very heart of these things, those hardships and trials that are pressing you this very hour, this week, in this month of your life. The hardest things are not those that the world knows of. Down in your secret soul, unseen and unknown by any but Jesus, there's a little trial that you would not dare to mention that is harder for you to bear than martyrdom. There, beloved, lies your crown. God help you to overcome and sometimes wear it. And I think that's where the heart of the matter is, is that it's not the question of what you see and what you're going through that is the obvious issue with you. Because if you're the one that's being challenged, then it's not a question of being right and having the right theological, scriptural, biblical doctrine in place, you know, to immediately answer a person. But why are you being challenged in that area that you were so well prepared, unless there's something inside that needs to be revealed and you have an opportunity maybe to overcome that and in so doing put on your crown of 
sanctification that God has won the battle in you over something that he sees you need to do about yourself, even though the circumstances of your life right now are challenging your your faith or your or your presentation or your ministry or your job or your life or your wife or your husband or your child. And the line has been drawn of inside you. Will you still make the right decision with the right heart? Or will you become hardened of heart and still make the right decision but act according to your own righteousness? The hardest part is to have a tender heart. And if you succeed, praise the Lord. But if you fail, it's okay. Because it is a process. And it takes time to develop inside when to know what to do, where to go, and what to say according to the gentleness of the Holy Spirit as He leads you in your way, on your way, the way He would have you to be today. God bless you. Because whichever way you go, it is a challenge. It is hard. It is meant to be to draw from deep inside you what you have built or constructed and become a lively stone of righteousness, an altar unto God that the praises of what he has done in you can be offered on. Or you have built a house of sand that needs to come down and a house of cards that needs to fall. The choice will be determined by your reaction and action in the circumstances of your life today.